1.30 a.m. Japan time. It's about a half an hour show and uh, three reruns after that 1.30 a.m. Uh, first show. And we will go through all the Makinochi replays and the interviews and a lot more in the Grand Sumo Fighters. So watch that by checking out the NHK World's free app, NHK World Japan. NHK Sumo Twitter, that's NHK Sumo is the Twitter account. July Basho being held in Nagoya for the first time in two years after the July tourney last year was held in, was kept in Tokyo at the Ryogoku Kogurikan because of the pandemic. But this year, for the first time in more than a year, the, the, the Grand Sumo is held outside Tokyo. So if things continue, uh, we expect the next next tournament outside Tokyo will be the November Basho at the International Kokusai Center in Fukuoka. September in Tokyo, November in Fukuoka. That is the schedule at the moment. All right, here's a final match in first half for Makinoji Tokushoryu six and eight against Chil Taidu. And ten. These three have faced off thirteen times. Uh, Took show to these seven to six. He is one of the last three. One of them by potential default. So actually two times. So you would like to establish his uh, left hand inside position on Chio Taigyu. Chio Taigyu, a hard pressure thruster. He, we yes. saw one of his best performances uh, in yesterday's win over Waka Takakage by thrusting him out. Konnichiwa sumo fans around the world and welcome to NHK World Japan special live coverage of day 15 of the July mm -hmm. Grand Sumo Tournament. You're catching a Tokushoryu versus mm -hmm. Chiltaiyu action right here. <laughs> Left hand slap by Tokushoryu. <laughs> Tokushoryu allows <laughs> Chiltaiyu to go inside but Tokushoryu advances chest to chest. This should favor Tokushoryu on the right. Chiltaiyu not really known for <laughs> fighting <laughs> Mamawashi. And uh, Tok Shoryu keeps up the pressure. Chiu Taiyu swings Tok Shoryu, but in the end, Tok Shoryu escapes and takes down Chiu Taiyu for his win number seven. Tok Shoryu victorious here on the final day. So Tok Shoryu, although he has a market push losing record, he finishes the contest with a nice four-match winning streak. Tokyo Toshi out left by Tok Shoryu, and he takes a match. Chest to chest, this should allow uh, Tok Shoryu to take command, but uh, Chiu Taiyu uh, in pink did a nice job of swinging Tok Shoryu to the edge. He uses that nice underarm uh, grip with his left and uh, tries to swing Tok Shoryu out, but he didn't, and uh, Tok Shoryu persevered and Tok Shoryu this is exactly how he won many of his matches in the January tournament last year to win his first and only Empress Cup. Seven and eight. Tok Shoryu finishes the tournament on a strong note. Four straight wins. Seven and eight. Four and eleven finish for Chiu Taiyu. And that is the end of the first first half. Again, we're coming to you live from the Aichi Prefectural Gymnasium in Nagoya, Central Japan. Hiro Morita with you, the play-by-play, -play and our Hanabuchi reporter, that, uh, the, also the interpreter, is Hiromi Ogawa. Thanks for joining us on this exciting day of Ozumo. We hope you stay with us for the entire show, which will be till 6 p.m. Japan time. 90-minute Grand Sumo Live coming your way from... Nagoya. The Grand Sumo taking place outside Tokyo for the first time in more than a year. And we have a really exciting championship race with VFM Pound and Sumo this basho.
14 and 0 Park Row versus 14 and 0 Tenno Fuji. A perfect record showdown for the first time in nine years. It was in the Ho hoping to capture his 45th title. Tenno Fuji going for his third consecutive and fifth overall championship and rise to Yokozuna. This NHK World Japan is transmitted or available to 380 million households in 160 countries and regions. So, again, thank you very much for joining us. Our live coverage, Grand Simo Live, of the action in Nagoya, the July Basho Day 15, the final day. The final day clash, the clash of titans. The two-man show in Nagoya will culminate in the showdown between the two titans. It's the undefeated Yokozuna Grand Champion Hakuho versus this man undefeated Ozeki Champion Teruno Fuji. Nobody could have scripted this any better. It's the bout of the decade. If that's an understatement, it's bout over the quarter century or half a century. The magnitude of this bout cannot be any higher. Some of the matches from uh, Tenno Fuji in the past, they won against Endo. Endo still was competing. He's now withdrawn from the contest with an injury. Very solid stop by Tenno Fuji on day one. And then on day 11, against Mita Kenny, he just smokes Mita Kenny. Then he was Meisei on day 12. <laughs> And the struggles a bit, but once he catches uh, Meisei, it's all over. Look at this. He locks up the arms, and he wins by Kimeta Oshi, unbarring force down. 12 straight. And he made it uh, 13 straight by being fellow Ozeki Shodai. Shodai swings Tenno Fuji to the edge. A little scary moment. Just a little. But he regroups, and uh, he wins by pushing Shodai out. So, Teruno Fuji racking up 14 straight wins and in pretty much commanding fashion. That's his personal best record, winning 14 straight from the opening day. Yesterday on day 14, he got, he got by Takayasu, very difficult opponent for uh, Teruno Fuji in the recent past. Tenno Fuji going for promotion to Yokozuna, and uh, that is pretty much a uh, done deal. 14 wins already. So, uh, Tenno Fuji hoping to put the icing on the cake by winning the championship here on the final day. We begin the second half action. We we'll have Kotoeko and Tochinoshin fight. Kotoeko 2 and 12 disaster here in Nagoya, fighting at his highest rank. Tochinoshin is his opponent, 6 and 8. The Georgia also struggled here in the July tournament. They have faced off three times in the past. Tochinoshin leads 2-1. to one. He's won the last two. Last time they met was in January. Tochinoshin winning by Yorikiri Osa. This is the Aichi Prefectural Gymnasium. The maximum of 3,800 spectators watching live sumo. Day 15. Tochinoshin will lead Nagoya with his fourth consecutive Makekoshi losing record. He's aiming to get his 500th top division victory right here. He's got 499 so far. Koto Eko in Lilac. Mawashi has won since day three. This man currently on 11 match losing streak. So he will walk away with the final day win here in Nagoya. 
Kimura Konosuke in the middle is the Gyoji. He has turned Gumbai forward, and that means it's time to fight. Kotoeko versus Tochino Shin. Fight! Left hand slap by Tochino Shin. Kotoeko goes inside. Kotoeko is using his speed. Kotoeko still attacking from underneath. Tochino Shin gets a firm grip. Left hand, that's his lethal weapon. He can control his man, and he goes for the Watenage. It doesn't work. Kotoeko fights hard. Kotoeko takes Tochino Shin to the edge. Tochino Shin picks Kotoeko up and lifts him up and out. Tsuridashi waiting for Tochino Shin. What a power. Crowd enjoy that, and that's his seventh win. That means he just has uh, picked up his 500th Makinochi win. Shiri Dashi lift up. One of the rare techniques we see these days. Shiri Dashi. Now, Koto Eko did a nice job of going inside, finding a nice inside position, but he was a little too high attacking Tochinoshin. That allowed Tochinoshin to get the strong left hand Watte. And now, from here, it was all Tochinoshin because Tochinoshin didn't allow Koto Eko to do his offensive uh, moves. Tochinoshin attacking with a Watte Nage attempt, and then gets a shallow grip right hand or an upper body, and he just goes for the most secure way to win, that is the lift out Tsuridashi. Look at Tochinoshi flexing his muscles, gets set, and he knew exactly where he is in the ring so he can rotate a little bit, so he swings and looks, looks, look at that left arm crane attack, and uh, bringing uh, Koto Eko out of the ring. Koto Eko gets out muscled in the end. Tsuridashi lift out. Mm. Koto Eko says, ah, I got beat. I cannot go muscle versus muscle with this man, the strong Julia. Hands down, this he is one of the toughest and strongest Rikishi still today in all Zuno. In all of Zuno. So Koto Eko uh, and Tochinoshi finishes, finish, and uh, let's see. 7 and 8, Tochinoshi, 2 and 13 for Koto Eko. Koto Eko finishes the contest with 12 match losing streak. Ouch. Yeah. No GP rankings. Let's see who can move up to Sanyaku. Uh, Ichinojo looking very good. 9 and 5 in the west side, number 2. Okto Fuji, uh, 8 and 6 at Mangashira 3 East. For Shou Ryu uh, on the east, west side, number 5, has picked up 9 wins. And also, the technique prize has been given to For Shou Ryu. Hirobayama, 9 and 6. Cho Shoma, 8 and 7. Those guys with parentheses on the screen, uh, they are yet to fight here on day 15. They will fight. After they will fight, those parentheses will be taken away. There could be a couple of openings at the Sanyaku, depending on how the men at Komusugi compete today. Waka Takakage will lose his uh, Komusugi rank with a big losing record, so. Uh, I believe Ichinojo can uh, fill in Wakataka Kage's vacancy. The, you know, the spot created by Wakataka Kage. So, uh, we'll see how things play out when the next one can come out in late August. Tamawashi and Toby Zaru are about to fight right here. Tamawashi on the left hand side, 11 wins and 3 losses. Toby Zaru, 3 wins and 11 losses. Now, Tamawashi on the left among Goldie, very important match for today. If he can rack up this 12th win by beating Toby Zaru right here, he will leave Nagoya with a special prize the Fighting Spirit Prize, his second. Fighting Spirit Prize is on the line for this Tamawashi, 36-year-old veteran. Yesterday, he surpassed a uh, consecutive appearance uh, list of Terao, ranking at number six. He's now on the all-time list, hey. number six for the consecutive appearance. More importantly, he has to win here to pick up his special Thank prize. You. He allows Tobizaru to come inside deep. This could be trouble for Tamawashi. Tobizaru getting set. 
Come on, Washi wants to escape. Come on, Washi with an armlock from the back, from the outside, but uh, still. Tobi Zaru could be the favorite right here. Tobi Zaru, Tobi Zaru taking Tamawashi to the edge. Tamawashi needs to recover. Tamawashi needs to improve his position before he can attack. Let's see what Tamawashi can do from here. Tamawashi goes for the unlock throw, but he's countered by Tobi Zaru. Tobi Zaru dispatches Tamawashi with a strong underarm throw. No special prize for Tamawashi. The double inside position by Kobe Zaru was enough to win. Kamawashi, Tate Nage under on the win for Kobe Zaru. His only the fourth win for this contest, during this contest. Now right away, uh, Tobi Zaru goes deep inside of Tamawashi, and that was the right idea because uh, he did not want to receive any of those uh, heavy dose of Tsupati thrusting attack by, from Tamawashi. Tamawashi gets caught in a very awkward position. Tamawashi high, Tamawashi gets an unlock. So his plan B attack was to go for the unlock throw. He tries to swing the Tobi Zaru out with the uh, unlock throw, the Kotenage. But uh, Tobi Zaru was uh, certainly ready for that. He's able to hold his ground. And Tobi, uh, uh, Tamawashi tries to execute this throw right here coming your way from the left side of Tamawashi. And Tobi Zaru is able to hold his ground right here. Tobi Zaru certainly ready for that move by Tamawashi. And he counters with a strong Shitatenage underarm throw. What a win by Tobi Zaru, the flying monkey. So at the edge, battle goes to Tobi Zaru, Shitate Nage, and that match, Tobi Zaru wins for the first time in nine days. Tobi Zaru was on an eight-match losing streak, and the 4 and 11 finish for Tobi Zaru as a result. Tamawashi's fighting spirit prize vanishes on the final day here. Almost, but uh, no. Toby Zaru uh, leaves Nagoya by winning for the first time in nine days. <laughs> Job well done. Hokuto <laughs> Fuji and Hosho Ryu coming up. Hosho Ryu on the right hand side, nine and five. He has won his first special prize. The Sumo Elders has already given him the technique prize for his splendid performance displaying the uh, numerous uh, nifty techniques. So congratulations to Ho Shoryu, the Mongolian. Asa Shoryu, the great Yokozuna's nephew, picking up his first special prize, that technique. One and all in uh, Ho Shoryu's favor about Hokuto Fuji in the past. Hokuto Fuji brings in eight wins and six losses. Ho Shoryu again, nine and five in the technique prize. If Ho Shoryu can keep doing the type of sumo he's been doing lately, his debut at Sanyaku, either Sekiwake or Komusuri, should be just around the corner, just a matter of time. For sure, you're not really getting uh, what he wanted this special. That is to fight Yokozuna Grand Champion, Hakuho. Again, the fight a uh, technique prize recipient for sure. Any next tournament, his rankings will go even higher. And uh, he'll have a chance to meet those top dogs. Hokuto Fuji and Hosho here. Hokuto Fuji, eight wins, and he has a solid pushing attack. Hosho Ryu, if he can stop Hokuto Fuji's north and south attack, uh, Hosho Ryu can do many things, can do a lot of damage on Hokuto Fuji, attacking from the side with his blistering speed. So let's see what happens. Hokuto Fuji and Hosho Ryu both already have their Kachikoshi more recent losses under their belt. Oh, 
Start the match. A little too hasty on Hokuto Fuji's part. So, Tsukitake. Poor start on Hokuto Fuji. Oshogi just a little late. Starting the match. So, let's go. Take, take two. Hokuto Fuji and Hoshogi. Another Mata. Well, Tachiya is very important. They have to start simultaneously by putting both hands, both fists on the dohyo, the clay. But uh, having advantage at the touchy eye is very important. So that's why you see these types of mata. After a clean start, Hokuto Fuji sticking with his pushing attack, but he loses his footing, and the whole show you knew exactly what to do at the edge. Goes for the slap down, and he takes the punch. Ho Shoryu leads the nice double digit winning record. He ends the July Basho with a nice 10 and 5 record and the technique prize. Thing you notice from uh, Ho Shoryu Sumo lately is that uh, even though when he cannot find his offensive game to be in full throttle, he doesn't panic. He gets taken to the edge, but he knew exactly where he was. He knew how much space he had to work with. So uh, he was able to remain poly, poised, and able to, to Okinomi's neck. Okinomi wants to get a belt grip for the inside position. Daesha goes deep inside and drives Okinomi back and out. Yuri Kiri win for Daesho. So Daesho in maroon, he finishes the Basho on a strong note. I mean, he only had one win before day 11, but after the day 11, he's won four of his last five matches. Five and ten finish for Daesho, the January tournament champion. Okinomi, five and ten too, so uh, these two will lose a little bit of uh, rankings. Daisho from Maegashiro 1 to perhaps to a very good Maegashiro. Okinomi, Maegashiro 5 at the current. So he could be in a double digit Maegashiro rankings in September. But it's always nice to finish on a high note, like Daisho has done. Next up, it is what. Uh, the Kagayaki and Meisei about to fight Kagayaki 7 and 7, Meisei 7 and 7. So Kachikoshi on the line for the next two. Zero in on Teru no Fuji. For the sixth time in sumo history, we have the perfect record showdown on the final day. 14 and 0 against 14 and 0. The last time was 2012 in July when Haruma Fuji defeated Kakuho for his perfect record championship. In 1983, September, it was Takano Sato and Chiono Fuji battling for the perfect record championship with Takano Sato coming out on top. 1964, March, it was Taiho defeating Kashiwa. 1963, September, Kachi Kashiwado defeating Taiho. In 1960 March, it was Wakano Hana defeating Tochi Tochi Nishiki for the perfect Mishina, record championship. Uh, so, only five times in uh, history of sumo, uh, only five times we've seen the showdown between the two undefeated combatants. Today, number six, Hakuho, 14-0 against Terukoki, 14 wins and no losses. For the first time this tournament, Teru Nokuji will be moving to the west side. He's been competing on the west side and the east side, the same side where Hanuro competes out Because they can't share the same uh, dressing room. 
It's interesting that uh, Miyagi no Bear All Stars are supporting uh, Hakuho this Basho. Look at Enho. Enho is a junior Rikishi. That means, uh, you know, he's usually he's not an assistant to his uh, upper rank Rikishi. He himself is a junior Rikishi, so he has his personal assistants. But uh, he voluntarily has asked to be Hakuho's personal assistant from day one to day 15. Everybody's gathering around the ringside for the final matches of this July Basho. Most important, of course, between Hakuho and Terunofuji. Before we get to that, uh, we have a couple more bouts and this one. Both seven and seven. Kagayaki and Meisei. Kagayaki minus not 12. Meisei that Shin Komusubi that really promoted Komusubi on the right. Komusubi is the fourth highest rank. Meisei leads 4 to 1. Very important match for Meisei. If he wants to keep his Komusubi status, he has to win right here. Anything less, he will be demoted to rank and file in September. Meisei will try to use his speed and his aggressive attack on Kagayaki. Kagayaki has the size advantage. He's taller and bigger. And Kagayaki will try to stop Meisei's fast moving offense. Kagayaki coming in with a lot of momentum. He's won his last three fights. <laughs> Job by Meisei. Kagayaki pushing Meisei back. And Kagayaki flies and down goes Kagayaki. Good dodging maneuver by Meisei. And Meisei on the final day gets his Kachikoshi more instant losses secured. So Meisei will remain at the Sanyaku. Kachikoshi on the final day. Good. Stepping to the side, dodging maneuver by Meisei. Iki Otoshi hand pulled out. See how he did it. Before we get to Meisei's play. Oh, see? Full speed. Oh, Meisei disappears from uh, Kagayaki's view. Using his speed, stepping to the side. This is what Meisei does. Meisei realizes Kagayaki is hoping to launch his frontal forward charging attack. And the Meisei just steps to the side, does a little bit of El Matador. And Kagayaki goes down with a thud. Tachikoshi for Meisei. Makekoshi losing record for Kagayaki. That's his fourth consecutive Makekoshi. So here we go, Koreori Sanyaku, three bouts remaining here in the July Nagoya Basho. When I say three bouts, yes, only three. In the last tournament, uh, we had a playoff, so uh, we had a three plus one extra bout between this man and Takakesho, but there will be no playoff for anything. This regulation match, the final match between Hakuho and Tenno Fuji will decide the championship winner. <laughs> Here is a Sanyaku Soroi Bumi, the foot stamp by the three Rikishi from the east side, Hakuho in back, Wakataka Kage, and Shodai in front. For the early Sanyaku performance, from the east side now, will be Tenno Fuji and Takayasu in back, Mitakemi in front. Three bouts remaining here in the exciting Nagoya Basho.
So Wakataka Tage from the east side remained in the dojo. Mitakeumi will do the same. Wakataka Tage versus Mitakeumi first. showdown between this man and Hakuho. This guy, this man going for his third straight, fifth overall title. We have the interview, Shinsaya interview, Mason. Congratulations on your Kachikoshi and how do you feel right now? I'm just relieved. So you were seven to seven and then on the last day you determined the Kachikoshi. So before going up uh, for the bout, what were you thinking? I was starting to have some doubts, and so I think that's something I have to rethink. And but I was able to move about very well on the on the dojo. Now you saw Koshoryu get his tenth win. Maybe that also inspired you. Well, yes, I just wanted to follow. I wanted to follow his very strong sumo. Now, Kachikoshi as a sanyak, I do believe that this will give you more confidence. Well, I had some good sumo, but bad ones also, so I'll just take that so, and practice well towards next basho. And what is your aim? for next tournament. I'll just try to concentrate and practice well. Yes, we look forward to that. Congratulations and thank you. That was Hiromi Ogawa interpreting the Meisei's uh, interview. Thank you very much. Meisei, known for his great work ethic. I'm sure he will work hard after about a week break upon completion of this uh, Nagoya Basho. Sumo will go back to Tokyo in September. Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics coming up, though, for the September Basho. Here's a man uh, who really wanted to be an active Yokozuna at the time the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics take place, and he's accomplished that. New Yokozuna, Terno Fuji, that's pretty much a done deal. He's racked up 14 wins. He's won three titles in the past year. Can't ask for a better performance. Yesterday, a couple of Shokushin found the judges uh, division uh, sumo elders were asked about their uh, his promotion chances. And uh, they said, that's for, that's for sure. Then Nokuji has done enough to make his way up to the highest rank of Yokozuna. But let's not talk about his Yokozuna promotion just yet. He wants to concentrate on winning the championship right here, today. Wakataka Kage and Mita gave me the battle of uh, former Toyo University graduates. Uh, Wakataka Kage is the junior, Mita Keumi is the senior. Mita Keumi has oh, held nice. Wakataka Kage in check 4 and 0 oh in the past. He refuses to lose to his uh, Toyo University Junior. So let's see what Wakataka Kage can do on the left. Shin Komusubi. Wakataka Kage trying to attack with his speed and Otsude, chest to chest. Mita Kage goes to Wakataka Kage with a nice move at the edge and takes Mita Kage out for his first ever win over Mita Kage. He hands the senior and sent by the loss. Strong performance by Wakataka Kage close out the July Basho. Wakataka Kage, Shin Kumusubi, beats the Makakoshi record of 5 and 10, but a strong finish on the final day. He receives an extra arrow for the Makakoshi Kage. Wakataka Kage is known for his Otsuke for forearm block. 
You can't get that chest to chest. Mitakini attacks, but look at the what the left hand over on grip, and down goes Mitake Umi. He rotates nicely. He's able to use his flexibility and the resiliency at the edge. And there goes Mitakemi without any kind of resistance. Uh, Waka Takakage making sure that he stays in the ring when he executes the throw. And down goes Mitakemi on his back. Waka Takakage flexes his muscles to beat his Toyo University senpai, the senior. What a nage over on pro win. Wakataka Kage will relinquish his uh, Komusumi rank and he will be competing at Maigashira rank and file position in September. But uh, I expect this man to come back up to Sanyaku very soon. Mitakemi, 8 wins and 7 losses at Sekiwa. Mitakemi was saying that uh, he wanted to rack up another double-digit winning record this time, but he comes up short. So Mitakemi's quest to Neiko Zeki is back to the drawing board. Disappointing. One more match before we go to the big one. Coming up is Shodai 7-7 seven and seven against Takayasu 7 wins. Five losses and two absences. Who would have thought Hakuho would be undefeated heading into the final day? A lot of people doubted Hakuho to even uh, go through the first week, be able to survive the first week. But here he is, gunning for his 16th Zensho Yusho Perfect Record Championship. Hakuho is back. Seven Okuji. What a way to make a statement and win promotion to Yokozuna. He is expected to move up to Yokozuna for the September tournament. But first things first. He wants to take care of business here on the final day, both men. Pride versus pride. Hakuho, the long time Yogozuna, has reigned the supreme for many, many years in this Ozumo, the number one man, alpha dog, Hakuho. But Tenno Fuji, it's almost like he's saying, well, senior Yogozuna, Hakuho-san, it's time for changing of the guard. Hakuho's wife and kids in stands. Will this be Hakuho's last tournament? Well, with the way he's been competing, we hope not. But nobody knows but Hakuho about his future. What future holds for Hakuho? Only he knows. Maybe he has told his I don't know, stage stable mate or the Oyakata or the family, but a lot must be going through Hakuho's mind. He has proven to us that he can compete at the rank of Yokozuna the way that expected out of a Yokozuna. This time, after sitting out in each of the past six tournaments. Shodai the Ozeki 7 and 7. He's backed into a corner. Again, Sekiwake Takayasu also 7, 5, and 2. No margin for error for these two combatants. Shodai leads the series 12 to 9. Takayasu winning the last match in May by Yori Kiri. So a close rivalry. The winner leaves Nagoya with a much coveted. Kachikoshi more wins than losses, the loser, Makikoshi losing record. So Ozeki Terno Fuji will be moving up to Yokozuna. Shodai just hardly hanging on to his Ozeki rank these days. His fellow Ozeki Takakesho out of the tournament with an injury. And the other Ozeki, well, Asano Yama, well, he is suspended for one whole year. 
by breaking the rules set by the Japan Sumo Association to dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. Here we go, Shodai and Takayasu, struggling Ozeki versus Sekiwake on the right. Kimori Inosuke telling the two Rikishi to just squat. Yeah, let's get things going. I hear a baby crying hard in the background, and that might have distracted these two Rikishi's concentration. That's why they were having a hard time squatting. But they're ready to go, and here they go. Takayasu gets a good grip, but Shodai finds an inside position. This is what Shodai likes to fight with double inside Morozashi. He attacks. Takayasu perseveres. Takayasu tries to escape, but Shodai shuts him down. Shodai leads and gets his catch and catch you on the final day. Pretty exciting battle. In the end, Shodai takes the match. Takayasu. No Kachikoshi this time, so he will lose his Sekiwake rank. Perhaps uh, Takayasu's loss could allow Beisei to move up to Sekiwake in the following tournament. We'll see. <laughs> Okuri Dashi rear push up. Pretty good speedy battle by these two at the end. Uh, yeah, Shodai right on top of Takayasu. Takayasu was trying to escape, find himself in a much better position, but uh, Shodai just sticking with to him, staying with him, staying tight, and that allowed Shodai to push him out from the rear. Eight and seven finish for Shodai. Seven. Six or uh, two monsters finish for Takayasu. Now, the match of the tournament. Okay, guys, this is the match of the year. This is the match that we all have been waiting for. And uh, this is Hakuho, the guy with the highest rank in uh, sumo. And this is Teruno Fuji. Teruno Fuji. So the both of them have all won 14 matches since from day one. And today they are meeting for the first time. show in Nagoya will culminate in the showdown between the two titans. It's the undefeated Yokozuna Hakuho versus undefeated Ozeki Terunofuji. Yeah. So if you're watching, the guy to your right is Terunofuji and the guy on the left is Hakuho. Haku is the Yokozuna. Yokozuna is the highest rank in sumo. And Teruno Fuji is the Ozeki. Ozeki is the next rank to the Yokozuna. So the both of them haven't... Uh, the both of them have won all 14 matches. Today is the 15th day. So this is the 15th match. This is the Clash of the Titans. Last time it took place was in the 2012 July tournament. Hakuho going up against Haruma Teruno Fuji, Fuji won the May tournament when Hakuho showdown. was injured. Haruma and Hakuho is back on pitch. The good news about them is the both of them are Mongolians. 
that from Mongolia and from the same city in Mongolia. We'll be doing just 12 matches this time. Those are his words. He just wanted to prove that he still can compete at a level ex expected of Yokozuna. But what we are witnessing this time is beyond our expectations. This man has exceeded our expectations by an indescribable margin. So the both of them are from Mongolia. And Terino Fuji, yeah, is 29 years old. Where he is right now, he's been hardly challenged this partial. And yes, Takuho is a higher ranked Rikishi, but Terino Fuji, to many people, is being considered a favorite going into the showdown right here. Takuho, although he has a 94 edge, he is facing off a very different improved So are you ready? No, we're ready. Championship? Or will Tenno Fuji beat the top dog Hakuho to capture his third straight championship, his fifth overall, and rise to Yokozuna? Is it going to be Hakuho? Or is Gets 